reply back. That is the communication. Yeah. So the advice is to master those three C's. Okay. Clarify what it is that you want. Mm-hmm. Find a way to connect it on your LinkedIn profile. Mm-hmm. And then start communicating your message. Your value offering, your message. Preach. Preach it out. Mm-hmm. And at the end of the day, you'll get to where you want to get. D- n- never stop preaching as in it's a daily thing. Would you advise that? Uh, it depends. You can run out of ideas or content. Three days a week is enough, but yeah. never skip Monday. For someone that wants to grow on LinkedIn, yeah. don't skip Monday. Oh. Monday Why? is a time when everyone... Monday treat, People treat Monday with seriousness. <laughs> everyone checks their... They are checking for any new job updates. So, um, like, don't skip Monday. Spend your weekend thinking of... Uh, I tell people, spend your weekend thinking of what you want to be famous for on Monday. Hey. Do research. Hey. Do hey. research. Hey. Out your Monday posts, and then Monday nine nine a.m. ten a.m. Put it up. Whoa! Well, that's the voice of Victoria Ateni, marketing and PR practitioner, a part-time resume writer, and LinkedIn coach. She helps individuals create profitable personal brands on LinkedIn through clarity, connection, and communication. Victoria is a sales, marketing, and public relations professional with a wealth of experience from various industries such as banking, e-commerce, events, and marketing agencies. But that's not all. Victoria has found a new position in career and personal brand coaching. Her niche, however, is LinkedIn. Victoria wants to help as many brands and personalities as possible to understand their LinkedIn voice and become authorities on the platform. Her personal branding gospel can be summed up in three words, like we've said, clarity, connection, and communication. Through her coaching sessions, Victoria empowers her clients with effective tools and strategies for their personal brands, enhancing their online visibility and fostering a proactive professional network. She also shares tips and information on how to gain more traffic and engagement on LinkedIn profiles, create lead generation content, write job-winning resumes, to mention just but a few. In a nutshell, Victoria is what you get when you put everything on a badge. This is very interesting because I had a conversation with her specifically on the subject of transitions in our professional careers and I thought that her expertise will guide us accordingly. So, listen to this. Welcome to the Life Signatures Podcast with Lawrence Namale. Lawrence is a life coach, author, and keynote speaker who loves to tackle different topics on purpose, productivity, and resilience. His mission in life is to awaken all your boundless possibilities available in you. Life Signatures Podcast is dedicated to bring to reality every single person who knows that deep down in their gut, there's got to be more to life than this. And now, here is your host, Lawrence Namale. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Welcome once again to another episode on the Life Signatures Radio. It's a Wednesday, and you know Wednesday we have conversations that are relevant to the topic at hand. And this month, in the month of May 2023, we're talking about transitions, life transitions. And uh, we've been having a very interesting discussion so far. We've uh, talked to a pastor who is now a business person and then we talk to an entrepreneur 
who became a full-time employee with the government. We also talked to someone who is working with the government and at the same time they are also working on their own enterprise. And today we have a very interesting discussion set up for you. On the line I have Victoria Atenyi. Is it Atenyi or Atenyi? Victoria Atenyi Nyanzi. Right. Victoria, it is such a pleasure to talk to you this morning. How are you doing? I'm very good, thanks. How are you, Lawrence? I'm okay. Uh, looking at your profile, Victoria, it's very interesting, the things that you're doing. And uh, mm. we are going to land on some of those things and just uh, have a discussion about this. But let me ask you this question. What really is your passion in life, Victoria? Um, I'm passionate about people. Yeah. I recently discovered that I love seeing everybody around me win. I I love seeing young girls and boys win and that 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 drives me a lot. Yeah. So I think that is what that is what pushes me to say I'm passionate about people. Yeah. Uh I'm the person that actually sometimes forgets about myself mm-hmm. and I'm I'm you know chasing after like helping someone chase their dream helping out like helping someone just chase what i feel might make them win or might make them have something at the end of the day yeah because there is there is enough space for literally everyone to win and everyone to do something that can make them become somebody in future yeah. if they focus on it now so i'm passionate about seeing people in beautiful spaces seeing people have very good jobs just it's basically seeing it and that brings my passion about people mm has it always mm-hmm. been that way for you being passionate about people to be honest with you after after actively engaging in it a few like a few a few years would be like two years yeah i sat back and reflected and i felt that it has actually always been like this right but before ever i never actively had to engage in it but i always felt that I want somebody else to win. I want a girlfriend to my younger brother to win. I want my younger siblings to win. I want my neighbors to be in spaces where they are winning. Yeah. I, I I sit back and reflect on things that I was doing when I was 18, 19, 22 and I'm like even back in the day actually I was rooting for people and I wanted everyone to keep to keep winning. Yeah. That that's, yes. that's that's interesting because even as as of now you your resume on linkedin shows that you're helping people to clarify some things about their personal lives you are yes. a linkedin coach and i'm guessing from that angle you 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 see people quite a lot with going through one transition in terms of their career or another is that true yes let's talk about your transitions before we can even talk about people and how you help them Uh, are there major transitions that you've gone through like you just shifted from one totally different thing to a totally different other thing in your life ah uh, well in my career yeah. uh then uh, I've I've done I've done a, a small shift or I've done a shift yeah because my career started with uh, my career started with marketing and PR uh, I did, did some six months PR right after university with an events agency and then right after that i entered into the banking industry yeah i was bank for two and a half years was almost making three years yeah then i moved on to a bank from a bank to e-commerce so if someone has been in the banking space mm-hmm. uh what you banks how you conduct yourselves how you're supposed to speak to customers how you're supposed to dress mm-hmm. uh the day bank you know bankers don't do nine to five mm-hmm to i would say 6 a.m to 9 to 9 p.m Whoa. so yes so just uh but the, the that is just the the day life but then you know how you're supposed to dress how you're supposed to conduct yourself even if you're to further your education the kind of of courses you're supposed to look at and then just me moving from uh that space on to e-commerce uh, uh few things had to few things had to change though most of it all i i moved with uh the customer relationship skills that I get from the bank was yeah. the beauty that I have about banking and for me every fresh graduate on my on my list of resume writing 
I always tell them we are drafting this resume, but I we should start. You should start applying for entry level jobs in banking because mm-hmm. a bank will share, a bank will help you like gain very many relevant skills. You will meet different people, and if 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 you if you position yourself so well, it will shape your future for the next four or five years. Okay, l- l- let's let's camp there for just a, a small, uh, a few minutes there, Victoria. When you went okay. to banking, when you went to banking, that was after the events uh, management thing. But when you went into the banking industry, in your mind, did you figure out that this is it? This is going to be my career here full time. I'm going to retire as a banker, things like that. No, because even when when I joined the bank, I had uh, I had seen some people in our uh, in our church yeah. that have worked in and. I had seen how if someone joins a bank and they stay in a bank for more than three years, mm-hmm. then they are like just they become a banker. Mm-hmm. You you're just going to move from one bank to another, one bank to another. And I'm 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 this kind of person that is always looking out for something new, something exciting, and something fresh. Mm-hmm. So I was in the bank, and each and every day, as I would finish balancing off my till. I would be looking for the next sales opportunity because I know, you know, when you are in a, when you move from a bank, the skill that uh, most employers treasure about you is uh, customer service, customer relationship, and sales. Mm-hmm. So I was looking on to the next sales opportunity. I would keep checking my LinkedIn. I like I was actively job searching. Yeah. Six months in, but I'm actively job searching because I had it at the back of my mind that Victoria, once you make three years in this bank. You're going to be a banker. You will keep being promoted from one, 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 one level of banking. One position to another. Yeah. I of course I I was I had I think uh, two promotions because mm-hmm. I joined the bank assistant that is a teller, and then I was promoted to customer service desk. Yeah. So performed well and stayed in the institution. I know I would have kept promotions coming, maybe up to branch manager, mm-hmm. but. For me, I didn't want to spend more than three years in there because I I've seen it from people, mm-hmm. and I know people can bear witness of it that once you spend more than three years in a bank, you become a banker, and I didn't want that for myself. I wanted much. I wanted to explore more. To be, I wanted to have an opportunity where I can just be anything I can be. Good. So what I'm learning from you, Victoria, is that. In whatever position we are at, we might find ourselves in a position that we know for sure this is temporary. But at the back of our minds, we have an idea of what we want, isn't it? Isn't it? Yes, so, and if yeah. and if you're working towards that idea that you want. Yeah, yeah. So for you, you knew that this banking, it's it's a stepping stone to something else, but it's not going to be my, uh, my I mean, my life is not going to be here. My career is not going yeah. to be here. Yes. Okay, so when we're talking about transitions in life from one mm-hmm. career to another career and, and so on and so forth. So you who has been helping or who is actively helping people uh, from moving from one career to another in their life transitions what lesson if you were to someone was to ask you what is the number one lesson you give someone in terms of managing their career transitions what will you tell them i it goes back to it goes back to what what you feel you are passionate about yeah and this we are told i think each and every day, mm-hmm. you when you love something deeply, mm-hmm. you, you 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 can even forego things like greener pastures. I'm um, looking for more money yeah. uh, because when you love something deeply, and you know, okay, for me, I I love. Let me give you an example. Someone tell you, I I love artists. Yeah. Um, um, I mean, first, but if I had the opportunity to manage an artist, mm-hmm. I would do it. For my passion, mm-hmm. I would run around them, look for TV stations, look for this, look for that, and that person you you you'll hear from when they are speaking that they they would really want to work in that kind of space. Mm-hmm. And for me, if I meet that kind of person, I tell them, right now, what is stopping you from doing that? Mm-hmm. And they tell you, oh, you know, it's the job there. 
uh, if even if I pick an artist up and say I'm managing them, I, the manager, I have to be the one to finance the artist for quite some time. And the advice I tell them is, uh, but is, it, is there a service that you can provide right now and you're not doing a nine to five and you're being paid for that service? Yeah. Because you know there are services that we, we, we can provide as individuals and we are not doing nine to five jobs and then you can pursue something that you are passionate about. Yeah. Victoria, that that is a yes. very key point. Let's let's uh, let's just go deeper in there, because there's mm. this mindset that sometimes people have, especially in careers, where I mm. know I have an, a nine. Okay, in in America is nine to five, and I have an <laughs> eight to five. <laughs> you see, mm. and I am not even thinking outside of that para, those that parameter. I'm just thinking of my nine to five. But you're introducing this thing that in managing your transitions in life, there is you've called them or what services have you called them? You've you've mentioned there's, say that again? There's there are just services out there. There there is a lot that we can do. Yes. There are services we can provide to people and we are being paid for them without mm-hmm. actually in office, waking up and you know, sitting in traffic to go just to be somewhere and deliver every day. Yeah. So, so it's important for someone at least in their life to know what is it that they can be able to, what service is it that they can be able to offer outside of their nine to five, right? Yes, yes. And and that kind of, does it tie, Victoria, does it tie to what you said earlier on that if you're going to look for managing your transitions in, in, uh, in your professional career, you need to know what you want or you need to know what makes you feel happy, what makes you feel better. Does it tie to the services that you offer? Uh, it's, of course, it, 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 it interjoins at, at a little bit, but then you know with, with the service that you're going to offer, uh, for people to pay you for something mm-hmm. that you are, we want to pay you for something that, you know, you, you are not even seated in office to do it. You mm-hmm. have to be skilled at it a hundred percent. Like stretch the skill, show the skill, prove that you are the best. Yeah. So it's for it. It's not just a matter of you know being passionate about it. Oh, I love writing CVs, but are you good? Yeah. Are you writing the CVs? Yeah. Are they winning for the jobs? When someone gives you their previous CV and you redo something for them, do they can they recommend somebody else to you? Yeah. And. It, this I've had an example of this conversation with a friend who was telling me, but I also want to start doing something on my LinkedIn. Yeah. And I told her, and much more you can do on that platform. There are business owners on there that just want to understand how to get leads from the platform. Yeah. So how about you learn about LinkedIn ad management and you position yourself like the best in Uganda mm-hmm. to run LinkedIn ad. Trust me, I believe that people that can pay someone to sit in their house and they are running running LinkedIn ads, real estate companies, like very many B2B companies want to get business leads from LinkedIn. Mm, so, and that is the stuff you will not learn from school right now. No university will teach you that. Mm-hmm. But if you can and perfect the craft and skill in doing that, I know it's something that someone can do not as a nine to five mm-hmm. and they can make a big living from it. Okay. That's good advice, yes. Victoria. Let me ask you this question. There is this idea of people, like uh, I introduced and I said there are people who are moving from being uh, full-time employed to being entrepreneurs. And then there's another one who moved from being an entrepreneur to being a full-time employed pa- person. In your work, especially on LinkedIn, do you see a lot of these patterns? Uh, honestly, I have not. Most of the patterns I experience, I notice is someone uh, transitioning, let's say, maybe uh, from law. Yeah. Oh, I studied law, but now I'm into the marketing space. Yeah. Uh, like, I've not, I've not, I, I don't think people actually consider the transition from a, a job to an entrepreneur or from entrepreneurship to a job as as a big transition. I don't know why. Mm-hmm. So, yes, so most of the up to me for advisor you know moving from one one, one industry one industry to another uh, but yes. they're, they're still uh, let's say they're still um, looking for employment uh, that's the bottom yes. line yes so let, let's talk about that for a minute because again it is a transition of sorts there is this thing that you've just mentioned that people someone studied law 
but then they mm. feel like I want to gravitate towards marketing and so on. Mm. You, you see a lot of that? Yes. I recently had a client who told who told me he studied uh, mechanical engineering. Yeah. He says I'm a really qualified engineer but I have done sales for uh, a shop somewhere and I feel I should just keep into that journey of sales. And he's asking me so how do I position myself like despite the degree in mechanical engineering yeah. I'm the best so I've I've had those from uh, one industry to another. And the key thing I told him was if you if you know you if you know you have the skill not even if you know you have the skill you've you've been performing you have done you have done the job mm. or the role mm-hmm. in a shop or uh, an e-commerce store or wherever you've been doing the job you are the sales executive or sales rep mm-hmm. uh, do you have more achievements or quantifiable achievements mm-hmm. of what you've been because uh, most of this the consultants is about my their resumes or linkedin profiles Yeah. So if you can quantify your achievements that you know you've been doing the sales and this is how you move the numbers mm-hmm. you've grown the revenue and your supervisor can actually attest to yes uh, Steven or Jacob has done that then just show proof of that in your LinkedIn profile in your resume mm-hmm. but then at some I you ha- you'll have to do start doing some short courses you know um we've seen this in um in in our career journeys or whatever you might have a skill and you might have everything but there comes a time when you need to just have an additional education to to just to to, to position you well for that kind of job that you want mm. and the beauty is you know, there is Coursera there is uh, Google and these short courses are like two months mm-hmm. you're doing a short course and and you're getting a certificate i spending like $12 $15 so i ask them to speak about all your quantified achievements on your resume and linkedin mm-hmm. but when time comes do a short course start by maybe doing sales t- sales uh, tactics do a sales discovery course so that when you sit into a room and you know there are there are other people that also want that job people that did a bachelor's in business administration others did bachelor's in commerce mm-hmm. and do with your mechanical engineering degree The only thing that is helping you stand out is you know how you're presenting yourself as the best salesman mm-hmm. the results you have to show then you have something little to back you up that actually I showed more like because I'm interested in this I took an extra step mm. I passionate about this and I took an extra step interesting so there is the idea of showing that you're proficient in um, yes. in the thing that you say you can do mhm But now what happens to his engineering degree does he like hide it or something No 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 I've also I've, I've seen I I've seen people I have a friend that I also studied a bachelor's in engineering Yeah and he's biggest or oh, one of the best uh dig- social media marketers in Uganda Whoa. and he doesn't he's even on LinkedIn you find his his profile so well Hyper Faisal his bachelor's in engineering and then his new course right now uh sim Mm because it's it's it uh it's in a, it's in a way of communicating that actually what I'm what I'm doing right now mm-hmm. I love I'm passionate about it I put aside my engineering because mm-hmm. I love marketing I love this industry and I'm taking an extra step to be you know a certified person in what I'm doing mm. and I have a yeah. feeling that even the engineering degree and so on adds a bit of weight in whatever it is that they are pursuing exactly, yes okay So now Victoria let's talk about you and your transitions and uh, what you are doing at the moment we left it when you were at the bank and then you went to mm. the e-commerce um, space what, what happened mm. to you after the e-commerce space are you still there uh no uh, that's why in, in the beginning i said i i, I love i love exploring yeah <laughs> i love flying around and um uh, And then the other the other thing I've experienced with my career is I I always I would say I always excel when I'm doing something mm-hmm. and I've always made my next employers while doing my my current job or any job I'm doing mm-hmm. uh, because I was with uh, I was with Jumia for I must have been like one year and a few months and then I met my next employer at that same role yeah so I At my next employer it was uh, a marketing agency South African based mm-hmm. they have some Uganda that they provide to branding material and I switched from uh, e to the marketing agency mm-hmm. uh with Jumia 
doing uh, key account management, negotiating customers, onboarding customers, managing their contracts, and making sure that customers are happy. Yeah. Uh, by customers, in some of the restaurants that we that uh, they onboard on Jumia Food. So it it was literally uh, close to what I had to do with the marketing agency still on board on board customers negotiate them present to them what you can offer them get contracts signed and then now start managing the contract yeah so and i that i transitioned i love it that i then moved into that space mm-hmm. because it was now more uh, a spe- like it was now more into the direction of what i ideally wanted to do f- even when i was at university because i studied a bachelor's degree in uh, ma- in business administration but then majored in marketing yeah so just the just moving into a marketing agency i felt i'm like yes now i'm probably going to start moving a step closer to mm-hmm. what i want to do to the things i want to do and how i want to work mm-hmm. yes so it was it was a, a, a small twist from sales because uh, in the bank you're doing sales and customer service yeah with the e-commerce still doing sales and client management yeah and then with this agency i was doing sales but because i was now getting to understand the you know some of the languages that they speak mm-hmm. they are speaking brand the marketing pr mm-hmm. and even how we are offering the branding to these people so it it just it it, it equipped me with more skills and expertise and right from there i still moved on to another marketing agency yeah doing a whole 360 of work i was onboarding clients managing the clients uh managing some of their social media pages mm-hmm. just uh doing it's the agency was offering a 360 service and at some point you're also offering 360 to the agency and i loved it so much because there i was in a space of everything i was in a space of everything that if i chose and i'm like okay now i should just specialize and uh, start doing media buying online yeah I said no. I should just specialize and just do social media marketing. I could specialize in that, but the only the only challenge is that right now in Uganda, mm-hmm. to excel in uh, in the marketing space, especially uh, actually not even digital marketing alone, to excel in the in the marketing space in general, mm-hmm. if you are not like head of department of these big uh, FMCGs, banks, fintech companies, but if if you're in an agency or in other space to excel, you have to have skills to do everything mm. you need the dig need the pr skills you need to be able to write you need to be able to negotiate media you just need to have all the skills that's the best skill in the marketing space right now because you you might want to move on to another job and the job description says they're hiring a pr manager and the pr manager has to manage social media pages yeah. edit the website take photos edit videos negotiate media write press releases organize events PR manager. Wow, uh, quite a yes. handful there. So, yeah, how how long did you stay there? Uh, I even right now I still do PR and media mm-hmm. and uh, PR and media consultancy for uh, one consult firm. Um, mm-hmm. So I'm still, still into the space every day. I'm still learning, and the beauty is that I stepped aside from a, a formal job, uh, a nine to five, and started doing my. Uh, personal things mm-hmm. is that I've I've been able to or to position myself so well on my LinkedIn that I actually get personal clients who want to work with an individual that no we want an individual marketing consultant right. we are branding this help with our branding you know our branding process and everything we just want you to handle only our PR so I love it nice so there's an important topic that you've just raised up and I I, I thought. It's important for us to talk about it from the individual mm. perspective of transitions vis-a-vis mm. branding. I know you are into brand branding. Uh, is branding one of your key deliverables in terms of the services you offer? Uh, yes, personal personal branding is one of those that I tap onto. Or I would say I tackle onto. Yeah. But then, so. Um, in the marketing in the marketing and PR space, yes. Business branding is also another service I tap onto. Okay, cool. So there is the personal branding and then there is the business branding. And do you know people yes. and individuals always evolve and always go through transitions? So Victoria, tell us what is the power of your brand 
especially when you're transitioning. And I know you've already mentioned some of these things, but let's just, uh, in our minds, switch on to the, put on the branding cap and talk about branding vis-a-vis transition. So there's Lawrence, who is an entrepreneur, or there's mm. Lawrence who is employed full-time at some point in time, and then Lawrence transitions into becoming an entrepreneur. What do you think mm. is the power of branding in his life? How, how can branding help him? Uh, in both aspects where you were an employee and where you are an entrepreneur, yeah. the most important thing is positioning yourself like you are the best at what you do. Right. The only way you can position yourself like you are the best at what you do is if you learn, do research, equip yourself with necessary knowledge and skills. Yeah. And this, the knowledge and skills can't remain in your brain, but now feed it to people. Mm. Everything you learn today, feed it to people the next day. Everything you learn, feed it to people the next day. Because that is when, uh, you know, people are not going to forget about you. That is one. They'll mm-hmm. keep referencing that is two. And if those two are happening, then people are looking at you like you are an expert in whatever you are doing. Mm. Or you you just have a clue or an idea. You actually know whatever you're doing. Mm. The rest of the preach and speak about or, you know, your your LinkedIn or your what, your online brand or this should be this way. It, 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 comes, as a, it comes as a by the way because I feel, Lawrence, you might actually not have a LinkedIn profile. Mm-hmm. But if you go speaking at an event of... Um, uh, maybe an event of entrepreneurs in Kampala. Mm-hmm. You you know what you are speaking about. People are going to refer to your content because they can relate to it. Yeah. They can. It's, it's asking them to take actions at the end of the day. So it's it it it's much more than just putting up a show or you know presenting yourself so well on your socials. Mm. But do inner work. You yourself do the inner work. This is this is interesting. So it it, it makes me guess, Victoria, that there is mm. more than just one aspect of this branding, whether it's personal or corporate branding. There is the aspect of the colors, the logos, <laughs> the the taglines, the values that you're saying. Oh, my value is this, and the vision and the mission. And then there is mm. the real deal where there is referenced work and maybe the third part I could say is the content itself, right? Uh, I beg your pardon one more time. So uh, the, the the idea of personal branding and corporate branding, it looks to me like mm. it has more than one facet. If you just focus on if you just focus on the colors and the logos and, and, and so on, from what I get you mm. saying is that it's not enough. It's more than the colors and the logos and the appearance that you're making, right? Yes, yes. Okay, so uh speak into that, please. You know, uh, your brand is what people say about you when you are not in the room. Yeah. You don't have to be there to represent your brand. could be a personal brand or actually a corporate brand. Mm -hmm. So... And it's it's not about what you've put at the forefront, mm-hmm. but people be able to reference. If a personal brand, people should be able to reference about you know about your content, about what you are passionate about, about what you preach, and then maybe lastly, uh, I I can bring it to the forefront or keep it at last. You know, also how you how you show up for yourself, how you represent and pre- and you know present yourself, mm-hmm. and even. Or for for the corporate brands, it's the same thing. Your brand is what people say about you when you are not in the room. Mm-hmm. Yes, you all the colors, the tagline, are you being consistent in everything if it's a corporate brand? But at the end of the day, which experience do you give your users? Yeah. Or which experience your customers? Because it's for a corporate brand, it's the experience that the end user gets that they will tell people about. Mm. So they experience me and then they go and say, Lawrence did X, Y, Z and so on. And that's that's part of the branding, right? Yes. It's the experience that after using a certain internet service provider that I'll then able and tell them that, you know what, Jared, use this internet. It's the best for home internet. Because I'm I'm actually now doing uh, word of mouth marketing for you, but after experiencing your very good brand. Yeah. 
that is the brand itself. It's stepping aside from the colors, the yeah. fonts, and the tagline to the experience I get. Interesting. Because uh, with with business branding, you know, brand identity is just one aspect. Yeah. That is where we use of the fonts and everything. So brand identity is one aspect. Brand messaging is another. Mm. Brand position is another. But then there is brand experience, mm. and from the experience, it's the brand reputation. Mm, 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 mm. So brand consistency. So how is a brand being consistent in everything in its message, how it's positioning itself, and all that? Victoria, you've rushed through very huge points. <laughs> <laughs> there's brand identity, number one. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Then there's messaging. I think you said messaging, right? Yeah. Then there's yes. consistency. A brand positioning. Oh, positioning. Then there's mm. consistency, and then the experience, and then reputation, something like that. I, I, it's brand identity, brand messaging, yeah. brand positioning, mm. the brand experience, mm-hmm. and the reputation, and finally consistency. Nice. Those aspects mm. apply to individuals as well as to organizations at large, right? Yes, I uh, I feel they apply to both actually. Yeah. Because uh, if you are to speak uh, in personal branding, brand identity is now, uh, and I, I love it. These days I'm receiving very many, I receive comments, pe- people appreciating uh, my brand identity. They're like, you call, you know, everything on your um, your LinkedIn, your Twitter, your Instagram, your Medium, mm-hmm. like there is one all through. You just positioned yourself like you 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 could be like a professional and a brand in what you're doing. Mm. So with, with with that with personal branding, it's just more of you know the appearance, uh, your profile pictures, your 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 headlines, your names, even the consistency in names mm. affects your brand like branding. Mm. Interesting. So that those those are the small aspects there. Though with corporate branding, now we go off the logos and all those other aspects. But you had a question for me. Yeah, I, 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 I was believing or imagining that with all that those, that stuff you've just mentioned. Remember the guy we talked mm. about who was an engineer and wanted to do social media marketing or is already doing that. If the guy yes. is transitioning from engineering into social media marketing, mm. he has to go through this cycle. He has to start the identity, isn't it? He has to restart himself with a brand identity identifying himself and then the messaging right mm-hmm. so so do you think that it's important every time i go through a transition and probably there might not be very many transitions but is it important that every time i go through a transition i reward or i rework my brand uh the question is how do you want to be identified right once you once once you answer that question in you that okay, uh, I want to be I want people to know me as Sharon, yeah, Sharon Toya to project manager. Then that's that's you. That's what you want. You want people to know that Sharon transitioned from a lawyer to a project manager. So you know, at some point, you people don't have to try to please uh, the outside world all the time. Yeah. Because once you answer those questions in you deeply, that how do I want, how do I want to refer to me, how do I want them, how do I want them to know me, mm. and what is that that I want them not to forget about me? Mm. Because now this, this takes us back to, uh, to to personal branding a little bit, because personal branding has that aspect of uh, you know tell your story. Yeah. Because the more you tell your story, if you're not ashamed to tell your story, the more people are never going to forget you. Nice. So why would you want to hide away from your story? But if, if you know, there are sometimes when people feel ah, this, I wouldn't want the public to know to this. Know this aspect. To know yeah, 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 yeah. But, but, so but Victoria, I, I, you know, sometimes, because sometimes I, I help people come up with the books, contents, and so on. But the thing is mm-hmm. that sometimes as a, as a consultant, you feel like the part they want to hide is really the mm. part that they should be telling the world about. Yeah. You, you've experienced yes. that before? I, well, I would tell you on a, on, on a, pers- on, on a personal basis that I, I have stories in me that I want to tell. Yeah. 
after because I, I also I'm not I'm not I don't make all the decisions about my life myself sometimes I sit back and maybe consult from my family consult mm. from my friends mm. ask them do uh, you think I should share this right now yeah, yeah, yeah. and the recent consultation I did with my sister she told me no don't share that right now give it time you would mm. you'll learn to something either because she told me she's like you will share this now and people will ask what has she achieved? Why is she telling us about that? Mm. Every Uganda I'll go through that. She was like, but once you've built something for 10 years, mm. build a sustain, build a brand that once you share that story, mm-hmm. you'll be like, wow, this is something. She actually went through that. Mm. So I think sometimes maybe the time is not right for the person Dining, to yeah. mm. tell the kind of story you want them to tell. So it's also about the time. Okay, I, I get you, I get you, I get you. So even as we are coming to a close, we are starting to come to a close to of this uh, podcast, this episode, Victoria, there's one thing you said earlier on when you're talking about banking, and I think it mm. can be tagged back to when we've been talking about branding and transitioning. One of the things, you, one of the aspects of the personal brand you mentioned is the brand experience, as in what people encounter with me in terms of yes how i make them feel you know how they mm. encounter my service my value addition and and so on and so forth so mm. that is also connected to what you said about customer experience at the, at the banking now yes at the end of the day i have this i i, I suspect that transitions in life when you're moving from one transition to another is it really just about you or it's about the impact and the experiences that you're creating and the stories that you're actually creating when you are impacting other people? What's your take on this? Uh, well, I love the fact that you, you, you've, you've, you've uh, tried to ask the question and you try to answer it a little <laughs> bit. I, because I've not met, I've not, I've not met or spoken to someone that says they they just woke up and they felt that uh, being lawyering is not for them. Mm-hmm. They should move into the medical. Or at at uh, at all times, someone tells you, you know, I I was at I I did this and the way I did it, everyone told me. But how come you know you are not a salesperson, but you've uh, you, you've done this so well. Mm-hmm. You've actually helped me by. At least I've experienced with people that have were not into sales, but they later transition. You know, sales is a very difficult, different industry, mm-hmm. a difficult industry. Mm-hmm. For someone to both tell you that I was a lawyer, but now I'm a salesman, and you're like, yes, now I'm a salesman. So, and it takes they need to take them time to move from uh, you know one level of sales up to when they're like, as as you know, like the. They, 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 they're, the, they're the business development, maybe managers in insurance companies or what, but they will always have a story. But mm-hmm. no, I was a clerk, but then, you know, I, I had gone to maybe take some documents to a client, and that's where I met this person who then told me about their product. I actually came back to office, spoke to my colleagues about the product, mm-hmm. and 20 of them both through me, I was referred. Whoa. They were asking me, but I think you are in the wrong profession. You <laughs> should be doing so. <laughs> How do you learn about this product in 20 minutes? 20 minutes. Come back here and ask about it, and we are buying. So, you know, the experience that now that was the brand experience. Yeah. But it's no one can wake up out of the blue and say, I feel this is not for me. This is not it for me. At some point, there is actually someone that has seen you do something, yeah, yeah, yeah. and they give you, like, you are actually good there. You're wearing the wrong shoes. You should be wearing shoes Ooh. over. Of this kind of person victoria that's a very powerful uh, sorry for, for cutting you but that's a very powerful um, nugget there because at some point in time i teach people how to discover their purpose right and one of the one of the things that i normally tell people is that you need to take note when someone else or other people point out something in your life that probably you are taking it for granted. It could be mm-hmm. that's where I mean that's where you should be focusing on. For you, you're focusing yeah. on being behind a desk or being behind a teller and, and 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 so on. But people are seeing 
wait a minute, that smile of yours, that, that the way you handle people, you should be in events or you should be in, you see, onboarding feedback from other people can be critical to your transitions, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. So thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Victoria, for bringing that point out. I think it was a very, sorry for, for cutting you there, but I think it was very 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 important for me to just highlight that part because sometimes when you face transitions in life we kind of like get lost as in where is the evidence of this thing can work for me and yet the evidence could be all over the place it's just that it takes sometimes it takes someone else to point out and tell you wait a minute you sold those things in, in, in 20 minutes. You sold everything. I've been trying to sell these things in two, two, two days, two weeks. It took you 20 minutes. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That is it. Because I'll, I'll give you another personal story. Yeah. Uh, this, this, this happened to me some, some time back. There was a time when I badly wanted to switch jobs. And like I told you at the beginning, um, like, I always want to fly. I always, I'm always looking for the next opportunity, and this. But this is not something I tell most of my clients because I've also had people tell me it's you should not be, you, you shouldn't be wanting to like just find something new all the time. Yeah. So, but I was, at, I was looking out for a fresh opportunity, and I, I was actively applying for jobs. But if I applied for ten jobs on my LinkedIn, mm-hmm. I would get back from eight jobs. Whoa. And then be called for interview out of those eight. Whoa. And then my friends were asked, Victoria, you can't have like a conversion rate of 80%. What is that you're doing? We apply for 30 jobs and we don't even get one calling us for interview. Whoa. And I told them, I, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I'm applying for uh, entry-level jobs and I should be applying for mid-level jobs. Mm-hmm. And one of them, okay, let me see the jobs you're applying for. He's like, no. You are sued for this, these jobs. They're asking for seven, five, five to seven years of experience in marketing. You are sued for these jobs. But what is that thing that you are doing? Yeah. So he went through my. He went. He he took some time. I think I think he spent like an entire night mm-hmm. going through the jobs I applied for my resume. And he told me, Victoria, it's with your LinkedIn profile and your resume. Wow. You optimize your resume for every job you apply for, and I wish you can do this for people. Because he would notice, he would go and go through my resume, and he's like, "There is no way someone will not call you here. Wow. They are speaking this, you speak it here. They are speaking this, you are speaking it here." And for me, I, I, I thought I'm like, "No, this, this is. I think everyone knows they have to do this." <laughs> I, I thought it was like everyone knows they have to do that. You know, you want that job, you have the skills and expertise, but maybe your CV is not speaking like that. So have your CV speak like the job. Until he told me no. People do not know this. Help them. Start helping people understand this. Wow. And that's how I took it up. I'm like, okay. And I offered uh, free resume writing services for three months just to, you know, to, to actually be sure that mm. is it the right call? Did I do this. And I was overwhelmed. I countless resumes I wrote for people. Mm-hmm. So when you speak about, you know, when you say uh, someone else can actually help you figure out what it is you must be doing that is right awesome so right now if someone wanted a resume done on linkedin victoria is the go-to person right yes <laughs> do you know of anybody else who does that victoria by the way uh yes yes i've met uh, i've met i've had to, i've interacted with uh a couple of people that are doing it uh there are two kenyan ladies one is called joanne I think the other is called Olin. Yeah. And I've interacted with or Ugandans that do it. I think I've interacted with two. Mm. I've interacted with one is called Komaketch. Mm. And so I've interacted with people that do it. Looks like they're not so many from what you're saying. They might be. I don't know. I, I surely don't know. And now I have to go back and do some more research about it. But those are the few that I interacted with. And... It was actually, let me say, it was because of uh, my my LinkedIn posts got to them yeah. and they came to me. Oh, you see? It goes back to that LinkedIn thing. Mm. It's like it's speaking for itself. So let's, let's, let's end this episode by you as Victoria putting on the cap of a LinkedIn resume writer coach. 
<laughs> I don't know if that's the title. <laughs> okay. Now we are helping people in this country and uh, outside the country. We are helping people who are in transitions and uh, what they are looking for assume that what they are looking for is the next job in their career mm. progression. Now, mm. they are using let's just zero in on LinkedIn. If they are using LinkedIn, what would be mm. your advice to these people who are wanting to transition into the next job of their lives, into the next um, situation of their career progression? They come to Victoria. Let's say you're giving them advice today. What would you tell them? Maybe two, three things. Okay. Um for me, uh, there are three, there are three, like uh, there are three things uh, that I try to move with. Uh, one is clarity, yeah. connection, communication. But then there are things that are deep into those things. So clarity is when you know, uh, sit down with yourself, mm. understand what. Uh, I have this with people that I do LinkedIn profiles for and resume writing. We call it a clarity session, right. where we get to understand. What are you good at? Yeah. What would you improve at if you were given the opportunity? Right. And what you well, because once you get clarity over those three, that I Victoria, um, I'm good at writing. Mm -hmm. What would I improve? At? I want to improve my public speaking, and what do I want? I want to be this kind of person. Then now you know you you've already put yourself in a in a pot where you it's now up to you to take up uh, time and. Master what you say you're good at. Perfect it. Actually, you have to perfect it. Yeah. Master what you want to, what well, what what you feel you would want to master, mm -hmm. so that you can be the. Part. But once you've picked, once you've um, identified those three, mm -hmm. then you now have to connect. And how do people start connecting with you on LinkedIn? I don't mean sending a connection uh, e message. Request, yeah. I mm -hmm. mean, how does someone go through your LinkedIn profile mm -hmm. and have the urge to connect with you? Yeah. Now that comes back to you know the LinkedIn profile optimization. Yes, you are Victoria. You 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 have some banking experience. You have some e-commerce experience, and you've been in marketing agencies. How are you packaging that for someone to read that on your LinkedIn profile, and they would still want to have a conversation with you, or they would still want to ask you the question? Oh, I saw you want to transition from you know um, uh, e-commerce mm -hmm. to this kind of industry. What course are you doing? We have an opening. Because then you've, you 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 now building that you build that connection through yeah. your LinkedIn profile. Yeah. I visit your LinkedIn profile. I know and know that this is the right person I should speak to, or this is a time waster. Yeah. So clarity again, clarify whatever. Because you know, if even when you find out that uh, I need to improve my public speaking, yeah, you have to study those kind of courses. So clarity, connect. How do we? How do you connect everything about you into that profile? And in two minutes, someone would want to associate with you. And then communication is the content, actually. Yeah. Because you know it's content that speaks for us. Yeah. So I find that I'm good at this. I'm good at that, and I'm good at this. Now, how do I communicate that to people? And I keep them involved. Like I keep them. I keep them just engaged in what I'm telling them. Because the engagement on social media is the communication we are having. When yeah. someone adds a comment, a reply back, that is the communication. Yeah. So the advice is to master those three C's. Okay. Clarify what it is that you want. Mm -hmm. Find a way to connect it on your LinkedIn profile. Mm -hmm. And then start communicating your message, your value offering, your message. Preach. Preach it out. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, you'll get to where you want to get. The, n never stop preaching as in it's a daily thing. Would you advise that? Uh, it depends. You can run out of ideas or content. Three days a week is enough, but yeah. never skip Monday. For someone that wants to grow on LinkedIn, yeah. don't skip Monday. Oh, Monday Why? is a time when everyone Monday treat people treat Monday with seriousness. <laughs> everyone checks their they are checking for any new job updates. So, um, like, don't skip Monday. Spend your weekend thinking of. Uh, I tell people, spend your weekend thinking of what you want to be famous for on Monday. Hey. Do research. Hey. Do hey. research. Hey. Out your Monday posts, and then Monday nine nine a.m. ten a.m. Put it up. Whoa, that's a major one. That's a major, major, major nugget. Okay, Victoria. Yes. 
I am guessing someone might want a deeper session with you. Uh, maybe they want to have a conversion rate of 80% just like you did. <laughs> and they want to get these skills. How do you do it? How does how does she do it? I want to know. I want to know. I want to improve my LinkedIn my LinkedIn profile so that I can accelerate and catalyze my transition, my career transition. And they are looking for Victoria. So my question mm. is where do they find you? Do you have like courses you take them through? How much are the courses? All that stuff. Ah uh, well honestly I I'm I'm thinking of a, a program but right now we someone will get someone can get in touch through LinkedIn. Yeah. And of course they want to just a LinkedIn profile makeover. I have a red card for that and we do it together. We have a clarity session and I keep any any of my clients I keep you know we keep in touch because we go through the whole stages of uh, anything we are doing together but I'm thinking of uh, some I want to call it unlock your potential because that's the name of my newsletter yeah. so I'm also thinking of a program very soon I might launch it in the next quarter over there yeah but right now I don't have any coaching program but we just go through if it's your resume we go through the whole resume revamp and writing together. If it's a LinkedIn, we go through that together because we have uh, uh, squarity sessions and then uh, interview preps as well. Nice. So, how do they get you? They go to LinkedIn? Yes. Uh, you go to LinkedIn and type in Victoria Ateni. Victoria is the spelling of Lake Victoria. Okay. A T E N Y I. Uh, the name will come with uh, some um, um, short form somewhere. Don't worry. Those are just uh, PR certificates. But yes, so it will be Victoria Atenyi, MCI PR, Diploma okay. in PR. Oh, okay. Yes. Okay. Awesome stuff. And from then they can connect with you and you can pick it up from there. And uh, the rest will be according to your plan and according to how they apply themselves, right? Yes. Just just to close it, you've seen you've you've done this with guys and you've seen success, right? Yes, please. Okay. Uh, in your opinion, what is your success rate of the guys that you've worked with? My God, I don't have statistical data. <laughs> mm. I, but you've see seen for... you've you've actually seen people after you've had a session with them, you've seen them improve, you've seen them, you know, get jobs and get tra- their transitions. Yes, uh, many. As me, I wish I could. I don't have statistical data about it, but yeah, I've seen. Uh, we've not. I've not had career transitions that have. Uh, I've not really had career transitions that much. I recently just had two clients in that kind of field. Yeah. But with uh, entry level, mid level professional, you know, they are job searching. They are out of jobs. I I really have testimonies. I have some testimonies. Okay. Great mm. stuff, Victoria. So thank you so much for taking some time to talk to me here on the Live Signatures podcast about transitions, about branding, about customer service, about the three C's, man. There's just quite a lot of <laughs> nuggets that we have unpacked today. And I know there's a deeper well if someone gets in touch with you and so that you can mm. be able to help them. Thank you so much, Victoria, and have a very lovely day day ahead. Okay, Lawrence, thank you so much for having me. Good morning. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening to Life Signatures Radio. If you enjoyed today's show, subscribe to Life Signatures Radio on iTunes, Stitcher, or visit our website at lifesignatures.libsyn.com. Life Signatures Radio, fresh, clean, and inspiring.